Wait. So, can you read our first new word today? Heavy. Heavy means snake. Nice. Height. You know, oh, this this, this is not to see me. You know what this word is? Mitsukeru. Mitsukeru. To 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 find something to yeah, to find. So yeah, mitsukeru is to you... find, and mitsukaru is um to be found. Be found. Yeah, that that that's a confusing. Yeah, it... <laughs> it's kind of nice to show you up a second time since I messed it up the first time the word popped up. So mitsukeru is to find. Mitsukaru is to be found. Um, do you recognize this kanji? Yami. Yep, which is darkness. Can you do me a favor and read this first sentence for me? Ore wa hebi o mitsukeru. What does this mean? I find, I find snake. I'm yes. looking for the snake. Well, it, it's like, I will find the snake. Is kind of what it what it is literally. I will find the snake. Right. It is used when you're going to search for something, but it's kind of like you're making a declaration, like I'm going to find it. Um. And you can see right here, I have the kadu version. So, ore ni hebi o miskeru means the snake is found by me. It's basically how you would reorganize the sentence. Um, okay. Do me a favor and read this word for me. Um, yami kui hebi. Perfect. So this is a fake word for our story, which is, you know, darkness eating snakes is basically what it is. So this kui and um, this ku, ku is the same. Basically, this is just a fancier kanji for it. It's taberu is that what it is. So taberu to eat and ku to eat is more masculine and then it became kui. Semi kui heavy is snakes that eat darkness. Funnily enough, the official English version, this is called Misery Eels. So pretty different. Just totally gave it a totally different name. Yummy Kui Heavy. Misery This is this is a mythical yes. uh, creature in the book, right? Yes, okay. it is a mythical creature in the book. Yummy Kui Heavy. So this word right here, do you happen to know it? Hito. Yep, Hito person. Nice. Uh, can you do me a favor and read this for me? Hito o mitsukaru yami kui hebi. What does this mean? Mitsukaru. The snake found the person. Yes, the snake that found pe the person. Perfect. So our next word is osoi kakaru. This is um to attack. The thing that you're attacking gets attacked with me. So, osoi kakaru. So, um, and it is a do verb. Hebi, hebi ni osoi kakaru. Yes. Uh, can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me and tell me what you think it means? Yami kurai hebi wa ito ni osoi kakaru. The snake attacked the person. Yes, the darkness eating snakes attack the person. Um. Osoika kadu is attack, but it kind of has almost a leaping at kind of connotation in it, like the attack at. So like you wouldn't like pathetically attack with osoya kakadu, like if you just like swipe at their legs. So it almost kind of like insinuate they're like aiming for the face a little bit. Ah. Right. That kakadu is sort of a jumping on kind of a feeling. A little bit, yeah. In in enclose the, the target. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> So our next word is yorokobu. Do you have to know what yorokobu means? Yorokobu, to yell, to call out. Ooh, super close, super close. You're thinking about yobu. To ring. Yobu, which is to call out. Um, yorokobu, no relationship at all. Yorokobu means to be happy. Oh, yorokobu. you're happy. You, you make noises. So you make some happy noises in yorokobu. <laughs> All right. So our next kanji that we're going to be remembering is a yoroko, part of yorokobu. Yorokobu. Yoroko. Happy. Um, could you read this word for me? Oh, yorokobi. 
perfect. So this is a noun, which is the happy plus big. So big happy big. is a large amount of happiness. Over, yeah, overjoyed. overjoyed. Exactly. So this right here is a not adjective soul. You're not really going to see this not adjective by itself because this not adjective basically means like, uh, looks like. So normally you'll be so. using this in a type of grammar point, which I'll be talking about in a second. So o yorokobi, I told you, is a noun in Japanese. How could you turn this into a verb? O yorokobu. Close. So theoretically you could do that. But what I want you to do is to turn a noun into a verb, not turn this noun into the verb that it was originally made from. So, o yorokobi suru. Yes, suru. Perfect. O yorokobi suru. Do you know what the mas form of suru is? Mas form of suru is shimasu. Perfect. Shimasu. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm talking about how this so works, I told you, that means looks like. So the way how this adverb, I mean, the way how this adjective works is that you basically, you get the stem form of a verb and you kind of just stick it to it. So tabedu is a do verb. So what you do is you get the mas form, which is tabemas, and you just delete that mas. So tabe so. So tabe so means tabe -so. look like eating is a what it is um so how would you say looks like they're super happy so first turn yorokobu yorokobi into a verb yoro o yorokobi shimas yes so but we've removed the masu yep so and... we just left with the stem which is o yorokobi so but well, we also keep the she right here. So, oyorokobi she so. so. Yes, perfect. Oh. Nice. See. So, now I'd like you to use it in this sentence. So, right here I have the sentence, me no mai no mono kie so na um, dorobo, which is a thief that disappears things right before your eyes, <laughs> basically. It, well, it looks like it's disappearing right before your eyes. Um... Uh, how would you say? I remember. In... Yeah. A couple lesson ago, we talk about the yona. Mm hmm So. Yes, they're very, very similar. So soul right here means we're only talking about what we're seeing with our own eyes. So it looks like. Well, yona is also a not adjective. The way how and yona gets um dictionary form versus stem form, but yona is literally just like, so it doesn't have to be in appearance. It can be like a smell or um some kind of physical sensation you're getting, or attitude, for example. So is only based off of what you're insinuating by your eyes, specifically. I see. So there's many occasions where they're interchangeable, but there are certain situations where you can only use yo. So um, the reason why you use multiple is because all languages like having um, different things happening, you know? We don't like to have the exact right. same sentence over and over again. That's also why we have kurayami and kurai until you have like 20,000 ways to say the word dark, but they all mean dark, right. you know? Um, I... So I made that this really bad sentence that I want you to translate uh, into Japanese, basically. So I want a knight that looks like um, a darkness eating snakes would be happy about. So there's some words in here that don't really translate to Japanese version, but that's because the, the sentence sounds weird when I translate it into English directly. But this is basically what happens with the sona. So we have a yoru that is like... Um, Darkness eating snakes would be happy about. So you can think of all Yorokobi as happy about. Yes, a knight. So the knight so, is this part. The last. Right. Right. So in this case, it would be darkness eating snake. Happy. 
อ่าครับอ่าคือยายามิคุระยามิคุยเฮบียามิคุยเฮบีอ and this had to modify all the all yoro yoro kobe she saw na yoru da perfect yep that is what I want you to make. Good job handling my bad sentence. <laughs> so oh, our next word that is was hard. Yeah. <laughs> our next word is ningen. Do you happen to know what ningen means? Ningen is mankind. Yes, mankind, humans. So, the hito kanji is pronounced as nin. Ningen. Uh, our next word I... is yowaru. Do you happen to know what yowaru means? Yowaru, weak. Yes. And yowaru is an u adjective. So it's r plus u. Yowaru. What do you think the te form of yowaru is? Wait, we're saying this is an r adjective? Yes, r plus u. Uh, it's a verb. So you're right that your y with an e is an adjective, which is y, But there's also a verb form of it, weirdly enough. Yeah, your water is to do weak. To, yes, to, the to, act of to be weak. Doing weak. Yeah. To be weak. Okay. Um, your wa. It's a root verb. So, oh, it's a R plus U. So it's actually an U verb. Right. So your wari. No. Your wa. Your wari. Um... It's going to end with te. Is it just going to be te or is it going to be small te? So is it yowate or yowate? It's going to have yowate. Perfect. Yep. Yowate. Nice little pause in there. So sono means like basically that. Um, Can you read, can you read the sentence for me and tell me what it means? Sono ningen wa yowate iru. That human. Yep. It is weak. It's, it's exactly being weak. It's being weak. That human is doing the weak <laughs> weakness. Yes. So the next part we're focusing on is this guy. Do you know how it's pronounced? We start with mean and it ends with what? Gen. Yep. Mean gen. Perfect. Mean so gen. can you read this for me? Hebi wa yo watteru hi ningen o osoi kakaru. Perfect. Uh, this no should be ni. I typed, I typed that too fast. <laughs> ni. Okay, okay. Uh, so right here, this is idu, but the e has been dropped due to slurring. I... Yeah. What does this mean? The snake attack the weak person. Exactly. It attacks the weak human. This could also be humans. Um, pluralizing is 100% context place in, based in Japanese. So that's why I added sono to this one. Because if you just say ningen wa yo wa teru, it sounds like saying all humans are weak. Which felt too dramatic to me. <laughs> so, Hi. so this is big. So it could be a single human or it could be multiple humans. But specifically, we're just saying weak humans. Hi. So a while ago, we learned toyu, like in roji toyu roji. Do you remember what this meant? Hi. The alley of alley. Yes, alley Meaning... of alleys. It means um, all alleys. All the alleys. Yeah. So yes, toyu is used to define things. A common way it is used is to have a specific piece of information first, and then a generalized piece of information next. So like kon to you. Can you read this kanji? Kon to you dorobo. Yes, kon to you dorobo. Is kon that is defined by a thief. So kon the thief, in other words. So you can use this with not just <laughs> noun, to you noun. You could put a sentence over here, a clause. 
such as over here. Can you read this for me? Ningen o osoe kakaru to you hebi. What is this? The snake. The snake that attacked the weak human being. Yes, the snake that attacks weak human beings. Uh, because of the verb form here, we we assume this is habitual. So if it was did attack, that'd be um in past tense. Also, ka ka, uh, and this would be ta right ka there. Ta? Uh, it it's not the it's not the pause ta. So also ka ka ta. So this is used when you um have, for example, a fantasiful name, such as Yami Kui Hebi, which isn't just something we'd re automatically recognize. So you, we they use to you in the context of the story to help us know what is this fantasy creature? Because I've never heard of it before. And the fantasy creature is something that does this. Hi. Okay, so now you're ready to read the line from the book. What did you ningen o? みつけて遅い Nice. So this one is um, the night uh, that the uh, shadow eating snake would be happy with. Yes. Um, and then we define yami the, kui heavy as this. And the, the snake that attack that jumped on the human being that it the weak human being that it came up that it came across or it found yes, discovered it finds. nice perfect yep yep it's a night where darkness eating snakes would be happy about because these darkness eating snakes they um they attack weak human beings they find Okay, kanji check. So we're starting way over here from last week. Do you remember how this kanji is read? This is the Amega Furida star. Hey. Yep, Furi. How about this guy? This one is Karada. Perfect, Karada. So earlier we've heard this word, not today, but yes, last time we, well, yesterday. Um, you know how it's the read? Side street. It is side street. Do you remember how it's, it's read? The Sai Waka Michi. Close. Waki. Waki Michi. Waki Michi. Um, yeah. Waki Michi. Ah, da -da. Michi. Da -da. Hi. And do you remember how this guy's pronounced? Um, last week's kanji. This is to hide. To yes. hide. Um, Starts with a ka. Kereru? Close. Ku kakureru. So let's go kakureru. read this. What does it say? Let's read it. Hebi wa wakimichi ni kakureru. What does this mean? Mean the snake hides in the sidewalk. Side street, yes. Oh, not 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 the sidewalk, the side street. I know you always mean side street. It's like one of those like words that like are right next to each other. So we're like ah. Oh. Yes. Our next word is marumeru, which is a do verb. So it does finally end with do. It's an actual do verb. So maru, you may or may not have know, means circle. Maru, same as that kanji. Marumeru basically means to try to make something circle. Marumeru. Hi. Um, do you know what this kanji is? Chu or yes. naka. Yep. Chu or naka. In this context, it is pronounced as naka. Um, sen naka means back. Hi. Can you read this word for me? Well, phrase. 
背中を丸める Hey. So to round the back. Yes, to round the back. This is kind of like to kind of like slouch kind of. So it's not like a fully going into um fertile position. <laughs> it's, it's you're only rounding your back, not your whole body here. Since we have only the back. So that's the hunching yourself. To slouch kind of. But I... it's not slouching in itself, but it's kind of you know, you're preparing kind of like hee 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 hee. <laughs> okay, so now I have this sentence for you to read for me. はい。脇道に隠れる道路は背中を丸めた。What does this mean? It means the thief that hides by, by the side streets uh, rounded his back. Perfect. Yep. The thief that hides in the side streets rounds their back. Which is basically like slouches, kind of. Um, so right. this word right here has the kanji for taberu in it. And that's because this is meshi. Do you happen to know what meshi means? Meshi is a meal? Yes, it's a meal. Perfect. Um, do you know what atatakai means? Atatakai. Warm? Perfect, yep. And can you read this word? You meshi. Perfect. What does you meshi mean? It's dinner. Yes. Perfect. Supper. Yep. Supper. Can you read this for me? Atatakai you meshi ga te ni haitta. Perfect. What does this I mean? I take. I have dinner. I have a warm. I have a warm meal for I dinner. I receive. I receive. I. I. I happen upon. <laughs> A uh, warm meal. A warm meal lands in my hands. Enters my hands. Oh, it lands. <laughs> okay, this is very passive things. Okay. Yes, that's a teni haita from uh, earlier. The... Teni haita, right. Mark by the gut right yep. there. That marks our passiveness. Versus oh, where it's more like, ah, it's mine now. I find the food kind of, okay. So, so. I always forget that bit. Okay. Hard. Uh, Next is so, so. Do you happen to know sozo? Sozo. So, uh, so is kind of like imagine. Yep. Imaginary. Sozo is imagination. Sozo is a form. Yeah. Imaginations. Imagination. Sozo. Uh, to, which, um, if you turn into verb, it turns into to imagine. Or to use your imagination. How would you turn sozo into a verb? Sozo suru. Perfect. And what is the te form of suru? It's sozo shite. Perfect. Sozo shite. So right here, we have sozo, which is to imagine, and you meshi. What particle do you think this would get? Sozo shite. You meshi. You meshi. You meshi. Yes, you're correct. Because you're you you have some control over what you're imagining. So I imagine you meshi. Which what does this mean anyway? You meshi o sozo shiteru. I am imagining dinner. Perfect. Hi. Now we get to go read our next line. Ore wa wakimichi ni kakurete se naka o maru. Marume Atatakai you meshi o sozo shite ita. Nice. So we have both versions of and in here. We have the te and, which kind of just, it's a very lightly way to say that these two actions are kind of related. And this one right here, which means that these two actions are not super related. It's basically kind of what it's insinuating. But it's mostly the reason why we use both is because we want to have some flavor. We don't want to have the same thing over and over and over again. But the reason why this is over right. here at the second position versus this one is because these two are more related than these two are. I see. So what happens first? So first, I hide myself in the side street. I rounded my back where I slouch. Yeah. And I happen upon 
no, no. I I dreaming about or I'm thinking about the warm meal. Yes, I'm imagining a warm meal. Perfect. And that is the end of that paragraph. Um, I do have the next part ready for us. Wait, what is this ending slide mean? Fukina. So um, it says Fujigina tree houses. Fujigina. So um, tree house. It, it just. So this the, is right uh, here. The is mysterious so tree house. Yeah, it's it's so that it's easy for me to make these slides. As you can see, they're all spaced like the same from each other. So oh, this right here means I can copy. It's your and template. Paste. It's my template. Yeah. That is what that is. It's cool. Helps help save me time. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, who knows how long these would make. Whew. Um, so now we have a new kanji again. Do you know this one? Oto. Yeah, oto. Or on. Or on. But yeah, oto in this context. So it's all by itself. Uh, this is sound. Um, and do you know what kiku means? Good. To hear. Yes, to hear. So what's this word? Mono oto o kiku. Yes, what does this mean? Means I heard a sound. Yes, I heard a sound. Perfect. So our next kanji right here, do you happen to know it? Ashi. Yes, which means legs. What do you think ashi oto means? Ashi oto is the sound of the, the footstep. Exactly. Footsteps is ashi oto, walking sound. Nice. So earlier we saw kiku, which is to hear. It kind of has a like you lit yourself here versus kikoiru is actually the one where it's like I am able to hear. Right. So that's how those are different. So because of that, kikoiru might take a different particle. Which particle do you think kikoiru means takes? It take a ga. Correct. Uh, um, ashioto ga kikoiru. I can hear footsteps. What's this kanji pronounced as? Kiku. Perfect. Kiku. Nice. Now you're ready to read our next couple of lines. So, sono toki ashi oto ga kikoeta. You remember toki? I think this was like one of our like seconds. Yes, exactly. At that time, what happened? At that time, I was able to hear a footstep. What do the footsteps sound like? It sounds like Gatsun, Gatsun, Kosun. Gatsun, Gatsun, Kosun. Yes. Kasu. Yep. Um, katun, 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 kotun. Katun, katun, kotun. So basically, um, what this tells us is that for some reason, two of the steps sound the same, and there's a third step that sounds different. Uh, this is because the character is walking with a cane. So this pair, so that's one step, two step, cane. <laughs> okay. So our next, next word is oku. Oku means like death. Oku. And it death. refers to both, for example, I'm talking about the ocean, and if you're talking about going down toward the depths of the ocean, it is also used when you're talking about like you're in a forest and when you're entering into the forest, you're going into the depths of the forest. So it's basically just means going into something. We are referring to the oku location. So oku is a noun, but it's just referring to some kind of location that you're going toward normally. So oku is deep inside of something. The depths of it. Hi. Um, could you read the sentence for me? Uh, oh, yeah, kura. something. Kura yami no oku ni iku. Go deep towards or go deep into the darkness. Perfect. That's exactly what it means. Now we're going to be looking at a slightly different particle. Eh. It looks like a he, but it's pronounced as eh. Um, this particle can replace ni whenever ni is referring to a location in a destination kind of way. 
And that's the only I... use this has. This exists as, as I say a lot of times, sometimes, uh, you don't want to have the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's, it gets boring. So a lot of times, eh, will pop up instead of me when we refer to locations. And right now it is our halfway point. So it's time for me to stop sharing. I'll see you in two seconds.